Previously on Plotty Time. Well, what aspect are you talking about? Kidnapping people? I guess that's a bad thing. <laughs> because they wear the garb to look like the monks. You kill the guy, you're like, oh, I got him. It's like, ah, I tricked you. It was a clone. Yeah. This is the real fight now. That's so annoying. Hey everyone, and welcome to Plotty Time, the podcast where we three gamers discuss video game stories in detail with all the necessary and appropriate backlash. On one side of the table, we have Chomp Slap. Keep it down, I'm trying to have a wet dream over here. <laughs> and on the other side of the table is Dr. Scientist. Riddle me this, riddle me that, mans. How's Ace Ventura going to mess with the Batmans? <laughs> And uh, my name is Papa Scotch, and as I always say, there's a 95-pound Chinese man with six, $160 million behind this door. Welcome to Plotty Time. You do say that a lot. Too much. I do, all the so time. <laughs> yeah, I often come up with situations where there's $160 million behind doors, and Never it happens. Always. It is who I am. You guys just got to deal with it. It's fair. So uh, let's start the episode the way we start every episode, which is by talking about what we did this week. And this week, I think we're going to start with Dr. Scientist, because I know he has a whole lot of, to tell us. <laughs> so, Dr. Scientist, what would you play? What did you watch? What have you been doing? I caught up on Outsiders and Picard. That's it. Is Picard over yet? No. The Outsiders' last one is tonight, I believe. Oh, you, you stoked? I'll be at work. You sound stoked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you sound super excited to see where this is going to end up. It's really good. Both. What do you really think is going to happen? Do you think they're all aliens? I believe it's going to end like Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna, Jason Bateman's going to get shot in his lawn yeah. this is 40 years later. Yeah. By the mysterious entity that framed him. By the outsider. Yeah. Himself. Oh. Wow, Shyamalan esque. So, did you did you play anything at all? My you PlayStation been hasn't been turned on in about a month. A month. Cool. What about the new games for download this month? They probably downloaded while I was at work. <laughs> what um, are the new games this month? Oh, I haven't I even have paid attention. Them. There's no reason for me to even turn it on. What are they? Uh, one Shadow of the Colossus. Oh yeah, that's the one I wanted to get. Snag that. Which is a great game. Everybody should get it. And the other one is something I don't really remember. Can't be that important. Yeah, it didn't sound great. It's probably some Moto X Cross X Games thing or something. Stupid. That sounds awesome. <laughs> no. It's pretty bad. Uh, I believe it's. it says here Shadow of the Colossus, which we already had, and then something called Sonic Forces. Oh, oh even yeah. better. A bunch of Sonic. Was it like Sonic games? You don't even know. Well, it's got Sonic and Tails and... The other guy. The other guy. The pink one. <laughs> There's a pink one? And uh, Mumbling Joe and... Echidna. Something the Echidna. He's the red one. Sonic Tails. Knuckles? Knuckles. Knuckles is what I was thinking. I guess you can create your own custom hero equipped with a variety of powerful gadgets. How did we miss this game already, guys? Wow. I'm going to make Sly Cooper. I bet you won't. Ooh. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Stop calling me out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what about you, Chump Slap? What have you been playing this week? Watching? What's been going on with you? I kicked around some more control. Still good. Still good. Do you know uh, how far you are? Uh, or what, Well, what happened last, I should say? I just got Hover. The Levitate? Yeah, the Levitate, and I'm fighting a big clock monster. Oh, that Stephen fucking guy. wrote this part. <laughs> The I anchor. remember first time I played that, I kept dying and I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do. Yeah, I died like five times in a row, and then I was like, "I'm turning this off," and I haven't turned it on yet again. Oh, the anchor isn't bad. He's one of the easier bosses. I keep getting exploded. Well, that's why you move. I do. I figured I could do it quicker before he could hit me, but I keep <laughs> dying on the last hit. Next time I'll do it quicker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As he speeds up, I can do it quicker. <laughs> so who feels. uh? I remember being kind of annoyed by that boss, but not as much as the big guy in the sky that just kept destroying your platform. What yeah, the hell the is that former. guy's name, scientist? Informer. No, just the former. Oh. <laughs> he's, the, he's the worst. Easily the worst. It's snow. It's snow. From... <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Canadian's saying, rapping finest. Licky boom boom down. That's hell. <laughs> That's the worst part. They just keep playing that sample over and over again. Wait till you get there. Every time you worse. you fall down a hole. I look you boom boom now. <laughs> That would actually be fun. Yeah, that's the thing that I still hate about control. You can levitate, but you can still fall through holes. Yeah, it's dumb. Uh, well, silly. But, yeah, I didn't, that's all I played. You had to watch something stupid. I watched a whole bunch of stupid shit. <laughs> oh, let's hear all about it. This is what the people come here for. I heard this quote from a Open Mike Eagle in one of his songs. It's, I watch bad movies because that's what I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> that feels very Except appropriate. Bad movies are too good for you. Thank you. <laughs> You're really boosting my self esteem today. But I, I watched Mythic Quest, the wrestling one. No, the one with uh, oh, that's Vision Charlie Quest. and Mac. Or, oh yeah, story. Max plays like a guy who created a MMO, and they're bringing out their first expansion. What did you think of it? I thought it was okay. I mean, it wasn't not nearly as funny as Sunny, but it had its moments. Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was good, but I I feel pretty much the same. Like it didn't blow me away. Nah, I won't. I'm not lining up to watch a second season. No, I, me neither. But I will, obviously. Yeah, I'll, but I'll, <laughs> obviously. And I finally watched this season of It's Always Sunny. Dude, I don't even remember what episodes happened. I don't even know if I saw all of them. Is it uh, the tweet one? Is that where they keep and Charlie just tweets and emojis or just yeah, text, each other? Yeah, text yeah, messages? Yeah. That's and the like, only one I remember. And Max texting these really long things and then it's just answers right away. <laughs> 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 That's so good. My favorite episode was the one where it's like the janitor always mops twice. Where it's like a black and white noir. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so dumb. I'm certain. I'm certain to love everything that involves Charlie. And everything else is kind of falling by the wayside. So, well, except for Frank. If you put Frank and Charlie together, that's my sweet spot, I think. Yeah, they can get rid of the whole show and just make a Frank and Charlie spinoff. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, you know, and let Dennis and Mac and Dee uh, pop in once think, in a while. I think it might be a little too, a little too much if it was just them all the time. Do you think? Yeah. Too much cat food. Yeah. <laughs> and Rickety Cricket. He'll be the B story every week. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to show up once in a while. Yeah, he was in Mythic Quest, too. But, let's see. I watched Guns Akimbo, because he had such raving reviews about it last week. Oh, yeah. Did I finish that? I don't think I finished it yet. No, well, what, how did, did how did you feel about it? It was a fun romp, but, again, nothing great. It's good for just a once and out. Can't complain. It's a decent action movie. You know, it's it's fine. Yeah, reminded me of like Hardcore Henry or whatever. Harry and the Hendersons? Yes. Hardcore yep, Harry same. and the Hendersons. <laughs> that I'd watch. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. <laughs> it's Hardcore Henry, but with Harry. Like, so he's just arms are all fucking monstered out. <laughs> just ripping people's arms off. It'd be awesome. I watched the shit out of that. Fuck yeah. I watch Hackers again because you got to watch that at least once a year to, yeah. to remind yourself. Of your roots. Do you do you think you watched it because we are all connected? Yeah, the, the writing on the wall. Was that? Well, I, I'm I'm totally not getting something here. That oh. that was a song in the film. Yes, but oh, was it? <laughs> I didn't get that. I still don't know why I right. did it. Yeah, why are we all connected? Cool. I'll just edit this part out because that <laughs> didn't land. No, you can't now. Yeah, because I'm going to reference it in five minutes, so you have to keep it. We in. are all connected. <laughs> the writing on the wall. That, I'll just cut to that part. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. You guys are making this easy. And just in case, so what else have you been watching this week, Chump Slap? <laughs> <laughs> we are all connected. <laughs> Watch that. Uh, I watched Standing Up, Falling Down with with our boy Benny Schwa. Benny Schwa Schwa? Yeah. I heard it was good. I have not seen it yet, though. It's okay. I laughed out loud a couple times, but... You LOL'd? No. No. Not that far. <laughs> Don't be okay. ridiculous. Don't put words in his mouth, scientist. Seriously. Yeah, but it got a little serious. 
So I was, I stopped laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriately. Good. It wasn't that it wasn't funny. It was that it wasn't supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. That's like I felt bad for laughing phone. about it while yeah. I was there by myself. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want anyone to think bad of me. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, and the last thing I have written down here is The Cooler with William H. Macy. I remember seeing the po like I I can see the poster. I have no idea what it's about. It's stupid. It's like <laughs> <laughs> he's hired to bring down people's luck at casinos so the casino doesn't waste lose money. What is he like a bad luck charm? Yeah, like someone's having a hot hand or whatever. He goes over to the table and they all of a sudden lose. I either saw that movie or saw something amazingly similar to that. You've probably seen it. It's old as hell. It is kind of ringing a bell a little bit. Then he falls for this waitress, and then... Yeah, that all sounds familiar. Then he starts getting luck back, and then... There's probably a reason why I forgot that I watched it. Yeah, because it wasn't that good. Yeah, that's probably it. What? Why did you watch that? What What drove you to that movie? It was in his Amazon recommendations. Yeah, it was on Amazon. <laughs> and I, okay. I think I've watched okay. everything else. Why do I even bother asking the question, then? <laughs> if that's always the answer to that. <laughs> yeah. That's why I watched Hackers again. So I was on Amazon. Yeah, but that was a good recommendation. Yeah, they know I like William you know, H. You, Macy. You don't have to watch every single recommendation. You know that, right? You do when you've seen everything else. Yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ, I watched a television show this week, for fuck's sake. Man, you must have been bored as hell. I'm running out of things. How do you have so much time to watch so much shit? Because that's all I do. I don't pretend I'm busy all the time. I don't pretend I'm busy all the time. I'm not going to lie to these people. These people deserve better. Well, what do you think we're doing? Just like staring at a wall in our free time? Like It's like, well, I could watch something and bring it to the podcast, but fuck those guys. I'm just going to stare, stare at, at the wall, wall for two hours. My ceiling's kind of cool. I know. Well, see? I told you. Did you say stealing is kind of cool? The ceiling. No, the ceiling's pretty cool. I don't know if you've seen it yet. But that's it. I'm going to kick it over to you. Yeah, you coronavirus-filled ass. What'd you do besides endanger most of humanity? I didn't. I just was in a space where it was there. Yeah, I then, don't you, even then you know. travel on a plane with a whole bunch of it. other people. Um, and thinking about going to the grocery store a little bit later, pick up some things, spit on some people and food. <laughs> Sneezing would be better. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Um. So what did I do? I I went to the. Uh, the movie theater. Remember that thing? No. Uh, they were showing a they still have 1987 those? horror film called Evil Spawn. Was it good? No. We could tell by the name. No. Well, it was know. not at all. But it was great. It was like one of those movies. Dead. I like Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably a mix of both. Yeah. No, it was about a, a woman who's... It was from 1987. It was about a woman who is like an aging actress and she's not getting the roles anymore. Because, you know, she's too old. She's probably like 40 in this movie. Who? But uh, <laughs> yeah. she... Who would watch that? Someone's... Some, well, that's not even where it gets crazy. Someone <laughs> sends her an experimental drug that'll make her look younger, so she just injects herself with it. And then she turns into some kind of hideous alien bug. Like uh. species? Kind of, but not an alien. Just like, she's not an alien alien. She's a human that became a bug thingy. So like the thing... Yeah, and then no. Why do you gotta always do it? So, so I understand it. There's better. a, there's a lot of fair, fair answer, by the way. But uh, there's a lot of uh, crazy bug murder, and then there's this dude who's like, wait, I, wait, I wait, guess wait, for, wait. They're murdering bugs. Bugs are murdering. Oh, okay. There it is. Thank you, Chomp Slap. Problem. But uh, there was this dude who in the movie plays, I guess, her biographer. I believe is what he said. So there's parts where it just cuts to like a hard-boiled detective narration for no reason. <laughs> it was a very strange movie. Sounds fun. So she was the evil spawn the whole time. Yes. A, an evil spawn within her. Did it end like Mafia? Yeah, actually. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Knew I've seen it. But uh, I saw that. I also saw um, The Invisible Man, that new one that just came out. Uh, here the it's one with creepy. Kevin Bacon? It's a... Uh, 
Oh, or the newer one? The new one that just came out. Not the Kevin Bacon one. Okay. That's I didn't Hollow know there was Man. a newer one. Oh. Is this part of the dark uh I thought they stopped dark that. universal monsters? I don't know. I, I should check. when they ended that. But. I think they only did the mummy for that. Yeah. And they were like, ooh, this sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom Cruise yeah, like, was going to be a mummy. Ooh. <laughs> I did hear, do you remember, you guys may not ever even remember this, but they did make The Creature from the Black Lagoon as a TV show. In the 80s? At, no, no, no. Like recently, like last, the, earlier, no, last year, 2019. And the people who watched it said they loved it because it was super gross and dark and violent. And then I think it got canceled after like four episodes. Oh, that sounds like it's right down my alley. Yeah, canceled after four episodes. Yeah, <laughs> nobody else likes it, but <laughs> yeah, so it's got to be good, right? It has to be. I like super gross and violent. But uh, Invisible Man was really good. Yeah, I, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, but it was really good. Uh, I highly suggest it. And then I watched uh, Bad Hotel Television for the rest of the time and didn't play anything. How was that? Uh, a lot of uh, syndication porno. stuff. Yeah, porno. That's what he means. <laughs> it was a work well, trip. Well, it was a work trip. <laughs> Boom! Hey. So you haven't played your Stadia at all? No, surprisingly. Isn't that crazy? I yeah, haven't played weird. it since the first day I bought it. Should have brought it um, with you. I probably I could have. But what would you have played? <laughs> I could, you could stream it to your phone. Oh, wow. wow. So you could have played it this whole time. <laughs> He's playing it now. I could be. Uh, yeah, I should probably actually give that a, a at least a uh, look like I'm giving it a fair shake. You know what I mean? Instead of just playing it that one time and giving up. Yeah, that might maybe. not have been the, the best purchase I ever made. Also, I cannot find a human being to give the buddy pass to. The, th- or the three free months. <laughs> 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 like everyone I'm asking, I'm like, hey, do you want to try it? They're like, no, not really. I'm like, I have a free thing. You can get like the top tier for free and they're like yeah no i'm good <laughs> do i have to buy anything put it on craigslist N- yeah right. like you don't even have to you can just play the games on your pc with your keyboard mouth they're like nah pass I'm like okay yeah, fine it. fine we'll just pay for the good stuff but uh i also watched a bunch of uh, reruns of uh futurama and the office and fucking american dad and family guy and just all that shit all the stuff that's on regular hotel TV all the time. <laughs> well, just Cartoon Network and Comedy Central over and over again. Nice. Well, uh, yeah, that's about all I did. Uh, but you know what I did do that I have to pass along to you guys is some news. You guys want to hear about some news? Uh, kind of. I'm all ears. It's only the best news possible. That's all we talk about, the best news. The first thing being... Oh, my God, Apex Legends 2. He's just going to keep saying news. <laughs> until he's like, All right, time to start the game. <laughs> Hot goss, Sclusi coming from here. Apex oh, Legends 2 is coming out. Um, no, th- don't believe us. Um, no so are you guys anyway. familiar with the, uh, the prototype Nintendo PlayStation? I've, I've seen it for auction or whatever on eBay. I, I saw retro grab bags retweet of it <laughs> there you go so yeah the, it was sold at auction it was going to be the playstation before sony tried to make a collaboration with nintendo to make the playstation but then talks fell apart they didn't move forward sony made the play, ps1 nintendo went their own way as well but there was a prototype unit that ha- says sony and it has cartridges and a cd-rom playstation on it looks like a super nintendo yeah. And it recently just sold at auction for three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. That's ridiculous. To a Mr. Greg Mac Macklemore, who is the founder of Pets dot com. See, <laughs> he's got that dot com money. Yeah, I wouldn't spend it on shit like that. Neither would I. That sounds stupid. What can you even play on it? Yeah, probably got uh, no games. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking clown pewter. <laughs> really got no games. Uh, I don't know if they can actually play anything on it. I, I would could imagine it's a reading. prototype. It can't. <laughs> There's nothing inside. Yeah. It's just the box. Or maybe like one or two dev, like tech demo things, you know? Yeah. He had to buy those for 150 million. And you know, if you ever go over to his house, he's going to have to show you. Oh, look what I got. Ooh, it's probably yeah. not even the most expensive, stupid thing. It's got a own. big crab on it you can play. 
Yeah, apparently uh, this Nintendo PlayStation console was found back in 2015 in the attic of a guy named Terry Diebold. He bought it at an auction for $75, not realizing what it was, and stored it in his attic. Why would you buy something from... <laughs> you buy something from an auction just to store in your attic. Yeah. What a guy. I bet you he was a tech millionaire, too. Probably. Who else has addicts these days? Seriously. Rich people. But uh, that is that, the PlayStation console. In other news, uh, the Turbo... Do you remember, guys, a while back when I talked to you about the... You know, the uh, mini classic consoles that are coming out, like the NES Mini? Yeah. Uh, the, the Sega Mini, the SNES Mini. Well, they're, I told you guys, I mentioned it probably six months ago, that they're doing a TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Yeah, did you pre-order it? Sure did, and I was supposed to get it, and I'm like, why isn't this here? So I looked into it, and it turns out it won't ship in March due to the coronavirus. Uh, did you really order it, or are you just lying to us? No, I, I absolutely did. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah it comes with... Uh, what are well, those you could just tell you them you have it. They can send it to you yeah. then anyway. Yeah, like, what's this going to do, make me sicker? I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and fucking, I don't have it. I don't... Like, <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, uh, Yeah. That's what someone just, who has it would say. <laughs> I was just in a town where 40 people out of 9 million did have it. So that by you the know you know, law of relative numbers that I just made up, I probably have yep. it. How's your throat feeling? Fucking fine. A little fine. scratchy. <laughs> Sounds a little scratchy. Yeah. You do sound a little bit lower timbre today. <laughs> well, that uh, that is unrelated. Oh, fair enough. It's all the work trips. It's all the work. I work trip till I go fucking horse. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So uh, then I have a, I have a uh, two more pieces of news. We're going to dip into video game entertainment for a second here. Uh, we're going to learn about The Last of Us is getting its own HBO TV series. I saw that. Uh, being written by Craig Mazin who achieved fame uh, writing for the HBO series Chernobyl, which was amazing. Never saw it. Pass. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> Don't pass. It was really good. <laughs> Fucking pass. And then uh, they, uh, I think they're still casting for Joel and Ellie for it. Like, it just got announced. But it's HBO performs. It's going to premiere soon. So maybe it's uh, was a secret they made. I don't know. I don't. But it's coming out. Maybe All right, who do you think should maybe. be Joel and who do you think should be Ellie? Ooh. I think Ellie, the hot casting now, would be that uh, girl from It. I don't know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I have no idea. I'll bring it up here. Uh, I'm thinking the, Emma Stone. Did you guys see It, the new no. version of it? Wasn't it based it? off Ellen Page? No, that was the one from uh, Beyond Two Souls. Oh. Uh, her name is Sophia Lillis. Yeah. Never heard of her. Pass. Okay, Pass. fine. Pass. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, who do you think should be Ellie? That's a good question. Dr. Scientist? Emma Stone. <laughs> Emma Stone? She's like 35. She's, <laughs> <laughs> She's 85 years old. She can't play it. <laughs> uh, what about Joel? Who are your, your thoughts on Joel? Mm, that's a tougher one. Emma Let's go Stone. with... Uh, NASCAR legend Jeff Gordon. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. It works, man. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. <laughs> Why would I think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, crazy old Mel Gibson might be a good one. No, I wouldn't watch no, it. No, I wouldn't watch well. it then. Yeah. What? He's still out there making movies. He's not canceled anymore. But I like Jewish people. Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's racist. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, in other fucking movie news, because we're going to move past this, um, <laughs> there is a little bit more news on the Uncharted movie front. They just oh cast God. Antonio Banderas in the film. Uh, his role is still TBD, but he is going to be in it, joining Tom Holland and Marky Mark. Is he going to be the bad guy? I would assume. Yes. I can't think uh, of his name. He's going to be the old guy. It seems a snug fit that he might be playing the villain of the piece. If I could remember so, his name. A really old villain? No. A Spanish villain. How old is he? Like Antonio Banderas has got to be 70. Yeah, right? He's not 70. Well, I'll okay, look it 65? up. 65? 
I'm going to say 62. All right, so I'm going to say, before I look at it, I'm going to say 56 just to be the low man here. Oh, look at that, <laughs> 56. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, it's a 56. I'm so good. <laughs> He was born August 10th, 1960, so he's 60 years old. He'll be 60 in August. Huh? Wow, I was so far off. <laughs> yeah, well, it's fucking Price is Right rules, bitch. So I was correct because oh, I was the lowest, you did, oh, closest yeah. without going over. Now it's that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always Price Eddie Raja. Right. That's who I was thinking he'd be. Eddie Raja. From the first Uncharted game. I don't know names. Did you guys just really wanted to do the Eddie Raja accent just now? Did we do it? What does he say? No, we like? did not. Oh, yeah. Why don't you do it, Papa Scotch? Why yeah, you're I, great at accents. I they don't, don't sound think racist that's, at all. I only do the one accent. Hey, the Italian this guy. One. <laughs> hey, I'm Eddie Raja. Huh? Yeah, Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> hey, Miss Moffat. No, that's... Hickory uh, dickory duck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Christ. But that's it. That's all I got for news for us. Uh, unless anyone else has other news. Uh, the lottery numbers today are going to be 6, 2, 8. All right. You heard it wow. here first. <laughs> the, the Palmerton digits backwards. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh Jesus! All right, we're moving into the game. We Let's don't, do we don't need this anymore. Wasted enough time at the top. Sure did. We did it good. So this week we are talking we about the good. one of is this is this the most recent game we've discussed? Has I think it be. is. I can't think of one sooner. Has to be. Uh, Call of Duty Ghosts. That was 2015 or 16. Maybe. Anyway, the game we are discussing today is the 2017 sci fi classic Prey. Is this the one that came out before Dante's Inferno? <laughs> we have to do. No, that was very different. This one was released on May 5th, 2017 for PC, PS4, and Xbox, developed by Arcane Studios and published by Bethesda. One of their games in recent memory that was not a complete piece of shit. So, oh, yeah, whoa, hot, hot takes. Take. Hot takes. Gloves oh, off. by the way, I'm going to take a quick pause. Do you guys see the article that came out of the uh, head of Bethesda saying, like, on a plea? Yeah, we really thought more people would be into Fallout multiplayer. No. I Does mean, he call I, us all I, idiots? I could have guessed that. <laughs> No, he was just like, we were very shocked by the uh, reception that Fallout 76 got. It's like, really? Why? Why, because he charged for a premium and charged for everything else? Ooh, do you remember when all those premium people got targeted? That was good times. That was a, that was great times. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the game's a first-person <laughs> shooter survival horror written by Richard Berry, Chris Avalone, and Raphael Colantonio. I'm pretty sure I got all those right. If not... Sorry, guys. Uh, who picked this game? This was Dr. Scientist, correct? Mm-hmm. It's very sciencey, so it makes sense that it's Dr. Scientist. How about you give us a little bit of a rundown of the story here while we start the game? Well, it's set in an alternate timeline where the United States and Russia had a bigger, more advanced space race. And humanity came across these aliens and built another station, but whatever. Didn't they work together in this Yes, timeline? they did. Oh, what a crazy timeline. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> yeah, sounds insane. <laughs> How and are they, we going to prove we're better than them if we work together? Because we're better than the aliens that we discovered and they don't tell us about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go on. But uh, you play as Morgan Yu, which conveniently is a unisex name, and you can be either one. Uh, I was wondering why their voices were different on whichever video I was watching. (laughs) And uh, you wake up to your first day at work at Transtar, which is just like a big conglomerate. Think of like Halliburton-ish. Okay. And uh, your brother calls you and is like, hey, come over. We got to run some tests. Glad to see you're coming to work with me. Blah, blah, blah. So you wake up and you go to your first day at work. Take a helicopter. Yeah. Which was a cool intro. intro sequence i liked it because it was kind of yeah i like how you're flying by a 
big buildings that say like Bethesda songs. <laughs> <and shit>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty cool. Like, I mean, you know, intro titles. There's only so much you could do with them, and I thought that was a really cool way to show them off. Yeah. It was going through like what was it, San Francisco, right? Wherever Transtar is located, <laughs> I don't know. Could be San Francisco. Pretty sure it was, but that that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you get in, you get in your helicopter and you fly over to Transtar, which seems like a very comfortable helicopter to get into, by the way. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn. And you also, go, I think you you went like around in a circle, and I think you actually traveled like two blocks. Like you yeah. probably could have walked it faster. I don't know. Uh, helicopter, dude. Yeah. How you're right. You you're faster I've, than a helicopter. Good Get your head out of your ass. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I'm the asshole. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Am I the only one that played this? I'm sure I am. No, I know, well, I know, I know Papa Scotch didn't because I told him to a thousand times and he never did. No, no, no. Liar. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, I told him 999 Set times. the record straight. No, that's not the point that was long. No. All right. <laughs> so, I started playing it and then I gave up. I chump slapped it. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what did it take the hate off of you? Yeah. Don't blame no, me. No, I don't. Short I don't remember. I remember there being a difficult part where I couldn't get to this one thing. Uh, and then I just gave up. On, like, I got confused of where I could go and, and just gave up on it. But after watching this, I definitely want to revisit it for sure. All right. I just want to set the record clear. I never gave up on anything because I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that's what you gleaned from that whole thing I just said. You gave up because you didn't want to deal with the bullshit in the game. Yes, there we go. Okay, now that the record is straight, what happens after you land on this fucking roof? Well, you go into Transtar and you meet your brother. And he's like, hey, we just got to run some tests, blah, blah, blah. They're normal tests, just go and do them. So you go in and they're kind of stupid tests. Yeah, his name Which is- don't make sense to you right now, but... His name is also genderless. Alex Yu. Yeah, but he's always a fat guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a weird Kinda decision gross to put him too. in that like that skin tight suit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole time. It's an interesting decision. Mm-hmm. But not I mean, that but we're fat shaming, of course. No. You go through we these never tests were. and they're just like, press this button, try and hide so we can't see you, blah, blah, blah. And of course they're ridiculous when you're playing the game to try and do. Yeah. And the scientists are like Wow, oh, that's pretty pathetic. Okay, I guess that works. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't one of them like the uh, the railroad one where it's like you can go on one track and kill one person? Yeah, or... yeah there's because then you get you one like a, a a written test, I guess it would be kind of like. And that's when you get to that, and then you see the guy pick up a a coffee cup, <laughs> which turns out to be a mimic, and it kills him. Yeah, he's like, "Where's my coffee?" <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And then they, I guess, gas you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you pass out and you wake up and it's the same day. It's like yeah. Groundhog's Day. Yeah, sort of. You're like, oh, what's going on? So you do the normal stuff again. I was confused about this part of what happened. This was just them running a simulation over and over, right? Well, you find that you out. You find so out, was, yeah, that... They run the simulation. Because you walk outside and the person who was there originally fixing something is dead on the ground. Right. Like it's. Are we led to believe in the game that this was the next day, I should say? I think you believe it's the same day. Yeah, you wake up and it says the same day. Yeah. But you are in your your apartment again. Yes. Yes. This is where I got confused because this time you didn't take a chopper over to the. (laughs) Well. Yeah, shut up. (laughs) Well. It's when you walk out your door the first day, you go up the elevator and do it. But when you walk out the door this time, there's a dead person outside and you get a phone call from someone called January. Yes. Who tells you you have to get out. You're not safe. And Probably then, one of the best characters in the game, January. Or December. But uh, you find out she sells you to escape and you can go to the roof and there's an elevator or a helicopter there, but it doesn't work. Okay. Ooh. But uh, you eventually have to, she tells you to get out no matter what, and you end up smashing a window. And you find out that you were just in a, a simulation lab sort of thing, and people were watching you the whole time. Oh. It's kind of felt like Portal a little bit, like they're testing you. Yeah, kind of. I could see that, yeah. 
like a spiritual cousin, you know, not. Yeah. Well, it felt a lot like Bioshock too, if you ask me. Yeah. The whole game? You Bioshock think? also. Yes, yes, Bioshock as well. I didn't yeah. get that. Did why didn't I get well, that? I mean, I mean there's a lot of like kind of Yeah, there's like, also Art Deco stuff and Yeah. Yeah, and just the I don't know. It just struck me as Bioshocky. But anyway, you've you get out in the simulation lab, it's called. And January is telling you that you have to get just go follow these directions. And you see mimics kill people and you fight a couple mimics. And Mimics are very interesting in the game because sometimes you could hear them move and then you look and you can't tell what they are. Yeah, and if you pick stuff up, they sometimes turn into mimics. Yeah. Was there a way to find out? If you hit them with a wrench first, uh, but then you end up smashing some stuff. It's yeah, funny that's... We should say, just to clarify, they can look like anything in the universe. So yes, chairs. They can look like a coffee cup or a chair or what have you. So you'll turn around and they'll just be a like chair... In, like at a table just like there always would be and you're like what the fuck was that yeah because sometimes you can walk into a room and you see like a couple chairs rolling on the ground because they mimic knocked one over and became another one and you're like uh oh that's pretty cool <laughs> I thought this, it, it added a very interesting aspect to the game I really like that part of it yeah because you'd never tell if something was a mimic yeah so you're not just picking up everything yeah there was one office you can go into somewhere in the game I don't remember exactly where it is but someone has like sticky notes on everything that says not a mimic <laughs> like on the chair is not a mimic that's pretty cool but uh January eventually leads you to like a a lobby type area where you find a glue gun and a neuro mod now the glue gun is an interesting weapon it just kind of solidifies the mimics for a while so you can pound on them do you need this glue gun to put out fires and stuff yes you can also build like steps to go up to things and stuff with it it's a very interesting weapon yeah it's pretty neat and then you I inject- think that's I think that's where I got confused because I didn't realize you could use it as steps. So there was something on top that I needed to get to, and I was like, how the fuck do I get up there? <laughs> <laughs> so on and so forth. But uh, you pick up the Neuromod, and January tells you to use it, and you inject your eye with a bunch of needles, which is not Yeah, I don't much. see how I, you could just do that because the robot told you to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo, shove this in your face. It'll be great. All right, yeah. Bloop. <laughs> I listen to all robots. <laughs> <laughs> they would never hurt humans, right? Yeah, she's trying to help you. Which yeah, but, uh, then- January, January, I guess we should talk about in the game is kind of like, I don't want to say your assistant, but it's someone on the radio. The, the whole feeling of dread is that you've lost all your memories. You have no idea what's going on. And January is there to tell you, no, you got to do this. You got to do this. Like, this is what we're doing. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Does January tell you in the beginning that you built her for? She tells you when you get to your office. Okay. Yeah, it's it. January tells you, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you created January yes. to kind of guide you through this process of not having memories and you're supposed to listen to her. But what I love about the game, too, is that there's you have no fucking idea if that's right or not. <laughs> like oh, yeah. January could have been made by anybody and then it just, just your voice. tricked you. Yeah. 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 I, I love we, that part about it. We forgot to mention that you don't have any memories of what happened. Yeah. And that's all explained later. But that's a pretty big part of the story, I guess. Because yeah. 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 there's there's constantly people like pulling you in every different direction. Yeah. And you have no idea who's right and who's wrong. And I, I love that about the game. I really do. I think that's really creative. And uh, the neuromods are your way of like getting skills, unlocking skills, like hacking and things like that. Yeah, is it like the Matrix where you could automatically know Kung Fu? Yes. <laughs> it's almost exactly like it is. The way I understood it, I could be wrong here, but the neural mods give you this ability, but they're the things that mess with your memory. Yes, because if you remove neural mods, they make you lose all your memory from when the neural mod was installed. And do you have to remove them? No. Does that count for every single neuromod or just some of them? I don't know. Okay. I I, I didn't... I I thought it was for either maybe certain ones or if you had too many. Yeah, I didn't know. I could be wrong. I know they were just testing them, so I guess that's why they had to take them out or whatever. But uh, eventually you... After you pick up your neuromod and glue gun, you walk into a lobby and you can see the moon and you realize that you aren't even on Earth anymore. Ooh, tricky. Which pretty... And January tells you... You got to get to your office, which is on the top floor, which apparently means you're a big shot in this company. Yeah, of course. Or all the offices are on the top floor. 
<laughs> yeah, maybe you don't have you don't own the building. You just own the top floor. <laughs> but uh, you fight your way up to the office, and uh, January tells you to watch this video you left for yourself, and uh, you turn it on, and it's you telling yourself that you were experimenting with Typhon, the Typhon, which are the aliens, and neuromods, and the reason you don't remember anything is because you've been running tests and removing them all the time, so you forgot. So we as the player in the game are supposed to get the idea that January is kind of like our, like a compass. Like it's the, yes, our own backup of what's going on. Yes. Yeah. And she's, January does tell you that you were supposed to be briefed on this every time they were removed, but someone stopped doing that. (gasps) Does she blame somebody? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) And then all of a sudden... The looking glass server freezes, which is what your message was on, and your brother calls you and says So wait, I, I just wanna pause a sec. What was the purpose of the looking glass server? Because that's a real thing in IT in real life. It's just where they store all of well, their why don't you tell us what is it? Video. <laughs> no, it's completely different. Uh, no, so it's really? like the memory backup, I guess, is what you're saying? Uh, yeah, that's what I would get. I think it's the hardware and software mix kind of it's like a cloud right sort of yeah it's where they store all their info and like i got you got all your videos on the looking glass server yeah cloud that's gotcha and alex calls and go ahead that was just because that's very different from what the it term of that is but we don't need to go yeah. over that. Yeah, we don't need guys to, are losers anyway. We don't Who need cares? to flaunt our intelligence. <laughs> no, of course not. Why would well, we? IT guys don't have intelligence, so it's kind of... <laughs> wow. <laughs> hot takes. Hot takes. And they are the opinion of Dr. Scientist and himself only. So. And every engineer. Alex calls and tells you that you can't see the rest of the video yet. You don't know what's going on. We're doing something. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, I guess that's supposed to assuage you. Yeah, it sounds like he's making a deep fake. <laughs> that, this game predicted deep fakes? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure they were around four years ago. So, And then January calls you and says you have to fix the looking glass server because you have to see the rest of your message. So that's your next kind of little MacGuffin here. Mm-hmm. You go yeah. and fix the server. Go to deep space, deep space. Yeah. And uh, I think this is... And could be wrong again, but isn't this where you start going outside of the ship to get from one place to another? Because the ship's all fucked up, right? Yeah, the things are exploding and stuff. But I don't know if this is where you go out first, but you do eventually do that. Right, because I, I remember being very lost at that point because it's one of those games, maybe, possibly, even a Metroidvania game. Not really. Not at all. But where you go <laughs> <laughs> to... Uh, well, there, there's... <laughs> there's uh, sort of like play- it, but yeah. The, you have access. It's one of those games where you have access to everything at the beginning, every area, but you don't have like certain key cards or whatever to get into it. So you have to go around, get the access to that specific yeah. area, come or back, you, blah, blah, blah. Or blah, you blah. don't have the specific skill sets to get in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Skill sets, right. So it's it's a Metroidvania game. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Perfect. The Metroidvania you. expert, Papa Scotch. Yeah, you're getting this. You're getting it. <laughs> I'm a Metroidvaniac. Maniac? Oh. Sorry. I'm sorry. Come back to me later. I'll, I'll come up with something better. <laughs> so you work your way to the hardware labs, and you fix the looking glass server, fighting Mimics along the way. Mm-hmm. And then Mimics after you- are the like the base enemy for the game, and they're the ones we run into all the way through the game, right? They're yes. like the Typhon's foot soldiers, basically. Yes. Oh, and, the, and the shadows, which are kind of like humanoid giant things. They can't change into things, but they're more annoying. Gotcha. And after you reboot the server, January tells you to go back to your lab and finish watching the video. So you have to go back. Mm-hmm. And the, when you get there, you watch the rest of your message, which tells you, you telling yourself that you have to blow up the space station to save, I guess, humanity from the Typhon. And that's the only way you can do and it. You have to kill yourself because you got part Typhon in you. Yeah, because the neuromods, the neuromods are Typhon- kind of related type of derived yes right that's what i got they made the neural mods from typhon 
or there was some little bit of typhon inside of all of us. <laughs> I guess that's the lesson we learned along the way. Oh, wow! <laughs> along with friendship. <laughs> but uh, after this, you finally meet January, and she's just a what they call an operator, which is just a a floating a robot. floating robot. Yeah, that helps you. A flowbot, if you will. No. No, nice. that's I will. I will. I'm right there. Oh, I was flow thinking Flow B. <laughs> <laughs> Cut your hair for it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard Flow B in 45 years, <laughs> at least. And uh, oh, that was a thing you could buy. I'm, okay, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can put it on a vacuum cleaner back. and cut your hair. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. It cuts while it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> sure does suck. And. January elaborates on the plan and tells you you need to get the two arming keys to blow up the space station. Mm-hmm. Alex has one, and you had the other, but Alex destroyed it, but you conveniently thought ahead and made plans, and now you have to go and find the fabrication plan to make the new one. Uh, so basically, the, the overarching goal at this point is to make the arming keys and blow shit yes. up. Yes, and get blow up the space keys. station. That's what you have to do. And there's a lot of fabrication plans throughout this to build different things in the game. I, t- I got there was a whole lot of side quests and shit in this yes, game, too. Yes, there were. Were any of them mandatory? Like, were there a couple mandatory side quests or bigger side quests? Or can you just blow it by all of them? It wouldn't be a side quest then. if it was mandatory. <laughs> Fair point. Mandatory side quests are not a thing, are they? No. Hashtag. Okay. Hashtag mandatory side quests. <laughs> so January tells you to take the lift down to deep storage to get your things. And, of course, you go there, and then something is stopping the lift from working. And she tells you to go through Psychotronics to the Arboretum so you can get to the top of the lift and see who's uh, stopping it. Classic Psychotronics to yeah. Arboretum. Yep. Been there, right, guys? You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? right. Yeah. We've all been there. Psychotropics. <laughs> <laughs> Arboretum. <laughs> Talk about IT guys, huh? These <laughs> We us IT people don't go into arboretums that much. We don't fuck with trees. That's just that's an IT law. <laughs> All right, so, so yeah. that's, that's your plan. We don't fuck with trees. <laughs> and on on your way on your little tryst through psychotronics, you get contacted by another operator named December, who tells you that you also made December to help you escape off of Talos One. Oh, and she and December tells okay. you that you can. There's an escape pod in Alex's office that you're that you've made for you to use and blah blah blah. Hmm. Yes. So okay, so basically that. they're setting up the a future choice we're gonna have to make. Yes, basically. And when I was watching the endings, apparently you can just take the ship right away. Yeah, as soon as you get there, you can get in the ship and leave. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's pretty great. Like, see ya, assholes later. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as you get to the arbor, oh, you might have to like find some codes and stuff, but you can eventually just get in the pod and leave at any time, <laughs> so and just cool. leave everybody there. <laughs> I love it. So you go through. She tells. Well, January also tells you you go through psychotronics. You got to get to this place called the guts, which is just like the center of the station where they move cargo up and down between the levels. Is there an aggro crack? <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice! Thank you. I missed something. Very There's a Nickelodeon nice. show called Guts, and they had to climb the aggro. Oh, <laughs> do you wow. have it? Guts. We go Floby and uh... <laughs> we're wow. really throwing it back. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! Fucking but, uh, ag- I always wanted a shot at that bitch. I, I know, I right? Nailed that, nailed yeah. Now that you say it, but uh, oh, man. You also find on your travels through a psychoscope, which you have to do some stuff. It's kind of like the camera from Bioshock, uh-huh. where you scan enemies and learn more about them. It also unlocks the uh, modifications and skill sets that are Typhon related in your tree. Like you can just do human ones, like hacking and lifting and jumping and stuff. But then mm-hmm. the Typhon one is you can like control people, make more Typhon. But then if you use those. Like the turrets and shit attack you? Yes, because okay. they, they recognize you as Typhon. So it makes you like like the evil skill tree. Yeah, kinda. yeah, it's kind of. But there is also one where you could turn yourself into like a coffee cup. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I want that power. <laughs> it is. Because you can turn yourself into a coffee cup and you kind of can make yourself roll. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> That's interesting. It's an interesting way to play it. I, li- I like how they're like, we can give you more powers and you'll be o- eventually you'll be overpowered, but... 
our stuff's going to shoot at you because that's how <laughs> they're going to see you. I like that idea. It's a it's a fair trade off. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But uh, you have to go through and calibrate your psychoscope and do other stupid shit. Fucking aggro, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe I pulled it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do right have down. written here in my notes that at some point, I believe it was either right around here where January brings up a really good point that you personally planned your own death. Yeah. I just thought that was a nice little piece of dialogue. To save humanity. Mm. Very selfless. Yeah. I also have here in the movie when you scan one of the enemies, I think, for the first time, it kind of has a flashback sort of sequence. You see like neurons firing and you can hear someone say, don't let them do this to you, blah, 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 and it kind of snaps you back to reality. Yeah, you get that a lot. Yeah, it happens a couple of times during the game. If you use the Typhon like things, I think it happens more often. Uh, Oh, interesting. Because they give you very little information. Yes, that's just kind of like a weird snippet. Yeah, it's just like, hey, you're here. Fucking. Yeah, and like a picture flash. But you make it to the guts, and they and uh, January introduces you to the Typhon's coral, they call it. It's kind of like just an ethereal webbing. Kind of reminded me of like a spider web, maybe of these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And nobody really knows what there are. So you work, your way, you work your way through the guts, and you get to the Arboretum. And here you've come across... A nightmare typhon, which I think I avoided because they're kind of big and annoying. It's like a huge thing. Also, it, I I uh, didn't get the idea that the weapons were that great in this game. No, no, I look like, like the pistol. The pistol. Yeah, the pistol was like a BB gun. Like you had to fill them with so many shots before it did anything. Well, and I you, think someone actually mentions that in the game too at some point. Yeah, yeah. If you freeze them with the glue gun, it does more damage. But. Yeah, then you that. break the glue right away. Yeah. You get to the Arboretum. And here you can actually go get the... I'm pretty sure you can get in the ship and leave if you want. But you go to where the lift is. And you find that there's a Typhon there that's controlling all the electronics in the area. And you have to fight. I forget what they call it. A Techno something. Uh, yeah. But it's like... Uh, it's fucking up the lift, right? Like yeah. you can't get up and down to the Arboretum because the stupid thing is in the way. Yeah. January tells you that it it hijacks and rewrites the machine code in the things. So it's not letting the lift work. Mm-hmm. How does See, that work? I don't know. You're the IT guy. Well, IT guys <laughs> don't have to deal with machine code because they're not smart enough. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking low blows. Okay. Which one of us has coronavirus? I, I don't have the fucking coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> we all might. Who knows? <laughs> Anyway, you event, you fix the lift, so now you have access to these between the main lobby and the Arboretum, which is just a way mm-hmm. over a shortcut. Yes. And you work your way to, towards deep storage, and you get, you get to there and find out deep storage is locked, and you need a voice activation code from Daniel's show to get in. So you got to go finding all these voice samples. Yes. Uh, that was such. Uh, that did not look like a fun portion of the game. No, I, depending on which samples you can find, you can do it quicker. Yeah, it seemed really long though for the one I watched. Well, it was. It was unnecessarily long, and there's a lot of side quests in this area, so it takes forever to finish it. If you do that, yeah. And you come across. You work your way to the living quarters area to try and find samples, and you meet the cook, who's just an asshole. Classic cook. Except he's not really a cook. Oh, is he an alien? No. No. Oh. He's a criminal who escaped and became and took over the cook's identity. Oh. Because uh. <laughs> we may have we passed over it, but they do experiments on criminals with the typhon. That's where a lot of this oh, came okay. from. Okay, okay. I missed that part. I knew they were doing experiments on people, but I didn't know they were doing it on criminals. Yeah. I don't know if it says it in the thing. I think you just find it from like Various yeah, other things. Probably read it somewhere. Yeah. But uh, the cook asked you to do a couple of things. And <laughs> he eventually betrays you and freezes you in a locker, which you escape from easily because you're... Because he's a dumb cook. Yeah. He's not a cook, though. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> he's a chef. Thank you. But uh, <laughs> you find Danielle Show's girlfriend's body, 
It gives you mm-hmm. the information to actually find Danielle's show. Yep. So that was so you, brutal, too, because there was all these, uh, I don't want to call them codecs, but like audio recordings of them talking to each other and like flirting. and Yeah, fighting. It was rough when you find her dead. So you go, you find Danielle, and she's actually like outside floating in space, avoiding these typhon. Which isn't very a safe spot because you have to go outside and fight them a lot. But right, right. She tells you what what you have to do, and you have all the voice samples. So now you can go into deep storage. So you go to deep storage and unlock the door, and then Alex locks you behind it, locks it behind uh, you, yes, and locks you in. This is for your own good. Yeah. So you think, fuck it, I'll just go find the fabrication plan. January's like, I'll find you a way out. Yeah. <laughs> Robot. Uh, voice. Is this? Are we getting to the part where you meet everybody else? Yeah, Soon. it's coming up. Okay. You, you find your fabrication plan, and you take it, and January tells you that there are, like, escape pods for all the data modules. So if you can get in one and shoot it out of the ship, you can be outside the ship, and you can find a way in somewhere else. So you do that. And you float around in space. Yeah. It's just yep. like another way to travel to a different area, right? Yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's kind of like opening it up. So then gotcha. you, you get, when you get out, you get a message from the security chief, Elazar. Uh, it says they're in the cargo bay. So if you can make your way to the outside of the cargo bay, you can get in. So that's what you do. You fly around the ship till you get to the cargo bay and enter that way. Is this where you find Deo Igwe? Dr. Igwe, yes. Nice. Great pronunciation, Chomp Slap. You nailed Thank it. you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, yeah, you can either save or just let them die in space. A, yeah. But you get to the cargo bay, you go in, and there's a group of survivors there who are fighting off Typhon. Alfred and Sam. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sarah Elazar. Oh, these are just, just the names I have written down. Elazar is the only one that really matters. Yeah, she's the security officer, I think, right? Yeah. And they built yeah. like a little fortification to prevent the Typhon from getting in at them. Yeah, she asked for your help. She's like, hey, help us fortify this, and then I'll let you go. Yeah, because they have the door locked down to get into the rest of the place because there are Typhon in there. Yeah, I'll open it for you. So he fabricates some turrets and put them there. Boom. And she lets you through, but you find out that the whole thing is still on lockdown from Alex. And then you get a contact from, I believe she's a Dr. Illusion. Is that Michaela? Yeah. Okay. She needs her okay. meds. <laughs> Michaela Ilyushin. Yeah. And she tells you that she knows how to end the lockdown if you just have to cycle the generators. So that's your next little thing to do to try and end the lockdown and travel freely through the station again. And he could help her by getting her meds to her. Yeah. You don't have to. Or though. he could let her go. Either one. Don't matter. So you eventually. Don't matter none. Cycle the generators. This was a pain in the ass part because it took me a while to figure out when I played it. I don't even know if you made it this far, Papa Scotch, but... No, fuck no. I've been checked out for a while. Like, <laughs> like, I, I think I made like the first hour and that was it. But uh, you reboot the generator and it ends the lockdown. And then Alex contacts you on the, on the comms and says, oh, I guess I can't stop you. Why don't you come up and talk? Yeah, he's like, ah, you reset the power. Everything's open now. You figured it out. You fucking jerk. Okay. Come up to my... (laughs) fucking asshole. Come up to my office. Yeah, so you do other things. Well, they have did some side stuff here where you can go back to your office and Igwe Ilyushin in January are there. Yeah. And Ilyushin tells you she wants to find out about her dad and you do that. That's just the whole cycle. Just a bunch of side shit. I don't believe you have to do that. But this is where you find out they tested on her father. Uh, this is where you have self-incriminating evidence. Yeah, I deleted it. I don't know why you showed her. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. There's just there's this is where uh, I feel like this is a section where the game really opens up. Like you find all these people, then you get all these side quests, and you can decide to just do whatever ones you want to. I guess. Yeah, and there's a lot of backtracking because you can get back into areas you can't couldn't before with uh, passwords and shit. Oh, um, interesting. So would you say it's better to do them or to not do them? If you like playing the game, it's better to do them. I, and I guess it opens up more of the lore, right? Yeah, and plus you get more neuromods to up your abilities and stuff. Uh, yeah, I oh, so. cool. Yeah. Gotcha. But eventually you make your way back to Alex's office to talk to Alex. 
and he's not there. He's like, oh, oh I just left the video for you. He's like, check this video. I bounced. <laughs> Didn't and he say something like, if you still want to talk to me after or something like that? He's like, whatever, just yeah, watch yeah, the video up. first. Page me. But Page it's, me. A, it's a video of you developing neuromods, and you had a plan to shut down the Typhon network by that he calls the coral the Typhon network. The neural coral. Yes, and you, and you wanted to run <laughs> these neural. tests, and you asked him to do all this. So then he explains, like, I was just doing what you asked. This is nothing. This wasn't me just doing this to you. But then he started to change as time went on, blah, yeah, blah, Yeah, because he knows that you want to just blow it up right now, right? Yeah. Can you say, chump slap, can you say neural coral three times fast? Neural coral, neural coral, neural coral. Nice. Nailed it. Great job, <laughs> chump slap. <laughs> Thank you. But he, he tells you your plan that you had. This is the third thing that I guess you plan you had when one of your things, but that you can use your psychoscope to analyze the coral and then you can make a giant null wave bomb that'll just neutralize all the typhon. Because mm-hmm. you have little hand neural, neural, null wave bombs that you can use the whole time, like grenades. Oh, but okay. this is going to be something oh, gotcha. bigger that'll shut the whole thing down. And he says, after you do that, he'll give you the bracelet, his arming code. Yeah, he's just like, after you can. Do all the research and prove that the null wave might work. Yeah. Then I'll give you the... Uh, yeah, because he doesn't believe you'll blow it up if you think you can stop the Typhon. Yeah. So that's what you do. Yeah, that's your next thing. Is going. To, you have to go outside and scan some coral. Now, when you scan all the coral, is this where you realize that it's sending out a signal into deep space? Yeah, something. Yeah. Some shit What like do you that. think they're talking to? Some type of... Will we get to it later? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Tune in next week. And that but, does it for... No. <laughs> but yeah, you, you scan it and you're finding out more about what the coral actually is. It's like a giant neural network. And there's also... Alex calls you and says that there was a launch from the Argus platform, which I guess is Transstar's platform or whatever. Oh, okay. That and, makes uh, sense. I was like, what the fuck does that matter right <laughs> now? And apparently your parents are the ones who own Transstar. Yeah. Spoiled little brat. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, these people are coming. I thought it was uh, interesting because right around this area is when uh, January, you know, you talk to January, obviously, the entire time. But uh, January mentions, like, y- you see this this flashback and this video of you, but obviously you don't remember it. And then January's like, well, which one's the real you? This one, just because she came first? Well, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Just yeah. to get you, like, thinking more and more about, well, should I blow it up? Should I listen to January? Should I not? You know, it, it was very to interesting. Alex? Yeah. Should I listen to January? Yeah, they keep throwing in those nuggets. Like, there's no definitive correct answer. It's what you decide. Yeah. Yeah. And- so it just makes you think you have to do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, fuck, now I got to play this game twice to see what happens? <laughs> Bullshit. But uh, you get back and you start uploading all the coral data to Alex, and then it stopped because... Walter Dahl has finally arrived, and he's there oh, to evacuate shit. the station. Dahl. Yeah. Dahl, Dahl, Dahl. Sorry. That was <laughs> he, he goes over the loudspeakers, I guess, and tells you that Alex and Morgan have been relieved of their positions not to listen to them, and he's going to help everybody escape. Yeah, he's like, everyone else can get out of here. Fuck you, Alex and Morgan. <laughs> Basically. But you know you must stop Dahl because he's just there to... Well, Alex tells you. I mean, you can probably figure it out yourself. He's just there to get all the research and then just blow up the station anyway. The passengers are just liabilities and witnesses to what happened. I remember him saying he's going to kill everyone off anyway. Yeah, he eventually tells you that, but I don't know if he does that right in the beginning. Yeah, I don't know. So he lands at the station and has been letting his operators go around and do what they have to. Uh, his military robots. And he has that really interesting conversation. I think it's later on, but he says something along the lines of, I'm just going to pop a neural mod. Yeah. And then do all this horrible shit, and then I'm going to take it out, and I'm just going to go home and sleep real great. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't remember so any of it. so fucking disturbing. <laughs> yeah, he's like so gung-ho about it. He's like, I could be the worst fucking asshole right now. Yeah, and you could get to his ship, and there's a message from your dad, actually, that tells him to just to get the research and kill everybody else. Oh, yeah, that's right. I saw it in the cutscene video I watched, and, it, and even Dahl was like, everybody? 
Yeah, because he knows like, that no. both. He, yeah, he's like, "Are you sure your children are on this?" He's, and he's like, "Yep, do it. Fuck them." Especially those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're paraphrasing, obviously, but yes, that's that is what is said. And uh, you do some stuff and kind of thwart Dull a little bit, but then he eventually starts suffocating everybody in the cargo bay. And he says the only way it's going to stop is if you come to him. And this is where plans start to diverge a couple of times in endings. Yeah, I was going to say. I, I think I watched like 18 different endings. <laughs> yeah, I get. I got very confused. So I just stuck to like one ending. <laughs> yeah. But you, you can eventually stop. Stop or not stop Dahl and his uh, operator Casper. You can kill him. You can yeah. let him go. You can incapacitate him. You, you can, can take, help him. You can take over Dahl's mind, make him do what you want. But uh, after you uh, finish the Dahl situation in some way, you can go back to Alex's a- office and finish uploading all the information. And after you do that, Alex appears and he gives you the arming key. Then you could choose another yeah, and th- tree. But, but you also have a fabrication plan to make the giant null wave generator. And then all of a sudden, a giant typhon attacks the station. The Alpha... <laughs> the Alpha. Is that what they called it? I don't know. I don't, remember. I don't remember. I remember January saying something like, I know what you're thinking, but don't even try to scan it. Yeah. Because it'll fucking kill you or something. But yeah, then you have all these annoying tentacles that are throughout the whole station after this. And this is kind of where all the endings start to happen. And also your brother's knocked out and floating away. You have a chance to save him. Mm. Can he survive or does he die in all the endings? He dies if you let okay. him. Okay. The the ones I saw yeah, he, he can, was he killed by Dahl. Oh no. Even if you let him survive, he decides to die with the ship. Well, it depends on the endings. Fun. But are we going to I have I'm so confused about all the different endings to this. <laughs> all right. We'll go through them. First one, okay, is uh just getting in the escape pod and things and leaving. At any time you can do that one and you get a game over. And just fucking off. You're like yeah. saying, later, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah, leave yeah. Okay. and then it says, okay, play again. <laughs> uh, another ending is you can use the giant null wave thing, and you have to go place it at a certain part in the ship. And Is that the thing that blows up everything, or is that the thing that just kills the it Typhon? It just stops the Typhon. Just kills gotcha. the virus. And man. when you get, after you get it all hooked up and ready to go, you go to the place where you're going to turn it on, and there's Alex in January there, and you have to pick which side... Alex wants to go ahead and January wants to stop you and blow up the ship. And you can either kill January or Alex and do whichever ending. And turn on the null wave generator and just shut all the Typhon down. I guess that's gotcha. the good guy ending. Because all the people live. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the last is to blow up Talos 1. So you can trigger the self-destruct. And then there's different things you can do here. Because Alex and January are both alive if you, if you save Alex. Or if you don't kill January, too, because you can kill January at any time. Yeah. And you can get away on Alex's yeah. getaway you, ship. Well, you can either escape on Alex's getaway ship. If you, you can incapacitate Dahl and change his memory, and he'll fly his ship out oh, is if that you get one? there. I saw one ending where you get on the ship with all the guys. Yeah, you can get like Igwe and Ilyushin yeah. out there. That's another one. Or you can just die with the ship if you run out of time. Yeah. But you basically either blow up, use the giant null wave, or just peace out. Yep. And then, which ones have the after credit sequence? They all do. Oh, do they? Okay. Yes. Okay. And this is where the bo- like the bottom falls out of this whole story. Yes. Yeah. So after you either save or kill all the people or the Typhon or whatever, it goes through the credits, and at the end, you kind of wake up in a lab and... Alex is there. Fat Alex. Yeah, there. Fat Alex. <laughs> and two operators, maybe, maybe three. Four. Four. I, I know one's yeah. Ilyushin, one's Igwe. Yeah. But there's, yeah, there's Sarah. a bunch of operators. Oh, Alizar is another one, yeah. Yep, yep. And maybe Dahl, I don't remember. Yeah, it was, it was another one that you didn't even have to yeah. interact with because a couple of the endings, it's like, he didn't even find me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that one, yeah. But uh, yeah, and they're all there. So these robot robots, it, they stand for all the characters in the game, and they all give like a score, I guess. Yeah, yeah, kind of like a moral decision on your actions during it. It's like, do you survive or do you die? Yeah, and uh, they, depending on what actions you take, they decide to either 
let you live or kill you. And if they let you live, they let you out and you look down and you notice you're a Typhon and they were just, yeah, they, he tells it, you the whole story. Yeah, they, like, they put you, they put Morgan's memories in you to see if you could understand humanity or whatever. It's like, we've spent so many years putting you guys inside of us. We never thought to yeah. put us inside <laughs> of you. Yeah. Oh, Cause so fucking deep, dude. Cause <laughs> earth is, earth has been attacked by the Typhon and Typhon are taking over. So they're trying to, Trying to turn Typhon good? Yeah, trying to make Typhon understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that was the whole thing. They don't have, what do they call them? Mirror Mirror neurons. Mirror neurons. Mirror neurons? Yeah. Say that five times fast, Papa Mirror neurons. Mirror neurons. Mirror neurons. Mirror neurons. Oh, here we go with the (laughs) Mariner bomb. (laughs) You got no mirror mirror. So that's basically Hey, fucking mariner, huh? (laughs) It's a propolone. All, All your decisions are kind of thrown together in... A two-minute scene at the end, and whether you yeah. they decide if you pass or not. It reminded me of like Fallout Three ending, where it's like just one. It's all the same ending, but then it's just oh yeah, different little tells things. you different mm-hmm. little shit every time. The little he title let, cards or whatever. Yeah. He let them poison the water. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's the whole game. That's the whole game. It was all a simulation. Yep. And you are not even a person. You are a Typhon. Yeah. I kind of, I had a, I had an inkling from the beginning. That's what all those flashbacks are. There's you kind of coming to in the thing a little bit. Yeah. Cause they all just like show. Yeah. These things standing around here. It's like, and there's also flashbacks of like Typhon attacking earth, which has already happened to them. And are those flashbacks of like the really weird voice? Is that like the, the universal voice of the Typhon? Like I guess. Yeah. The neural network or whatever. I definitely, it crossed my mind that this was all a simulation for sure, but it did not cross my mind that I would be a Typhon playing through it. Yeah, because it should cross your mind that it might all be simulation when you first wake up and realize you're, you're in a simulation. A simulation, yeah. simulation <laughs> in a simulation. Pretty Whoa. Damn, it's like, Inception. What's that movie? Inception. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's, it's a Matrix Inception. Huh, that was a lot. There was a lot. I wrote a lot on this paper. Yeah, I have five or six pages of notes, and I don't even say that much. But <laughs> let's go ahead and let's get to the point where we do get to talk and move into our final thoughts. All right. Uh, Why don't you go first, Papa Scotch? Oh. Yeah, you know what? I think that's a good idea. I, I think uh, I will go first on this one. Yeah, I think you should tell us, would you play it? What'd you score? And did the story work for you? Thank you for asking me that very natural question, Dr. Tom Slap. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, would I play it? Like I said originally, the first time I played it, I played it to a point where I got confused on a puzzle and gave up. And I think, I don't remember exactly what the game is. If I looked back in my trophies, I could probably find it. But I think there was a new game that came out and I really wanted to get into it. <laughs> and since since Prey frustrated, frustrated me, I was like, ah, fuck it. And I just put it down. It's probably the Division 2. <laughs> I hope not. I'll check while you guys are talking, but <laughs> I hope it's not. Uh, but I remember it being interesting and fun, and it was a little frustrating with the puzzles, but I think I want to go back to it and give it another shot. Uh, we're kind of in a downtime of games right now. I should be working through my bat log, but instead I'm just not playing anything, Especially which is always a smart idea. You didn't buy Onechimbara Z2 <laughs> Chaos? I, I did not. Not yet. Not yet. I was playing until I got home. Uh, did you play that yet, by the way? No, not yet. Okay. Still doing control. Gotcha. So, uh, would I play it overall? Yes. Uh, there's no more, <laughs> there's no, uh, cop out in this game where we could say maybe if they redid it, cause you know, <laughs> the game's pretty <laughs> fucking new. Three years old. Yeah, it's three years that. old. It's on this current generation, but, uh, did the story work for me? I want to say yes, it did. I thought it, it's. The cutscene movies we all watched were a bit confusing because they went through the multiple endings and they were all affected very specifically by what you did in the game. So I was pretty confused by the end of everything, but I shouldn't hold that against the game. Like if I would have played it as a linear experience, I would have seen the consequences of my actions. So I would say the story did work for me. Uh overall i liked the weapons were there to protect you but there's all they're all stuff you could find on the ship or fabricate 
there wasn't like a BFG version for this <laughs> game where you can just clear the whole board of enemies and be like, that was easy. Every every fight I was in felt like a battle because I had the wrench or a fucking BB gun. There are also cool things called like recycle grenades because in the game you can recycle stuff and it gives you like, uh, what's the word? Garbage. Yeah, garbage. Where you can make, you can use that to make other stuff. Yeah, okay. that's interesting. Cause that, oh, what is the game from Fall, the the gun from Fallout Three where you shoot your garbage, the rock it launcher? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That was one of my favorite fucking guns ever. So <laughs> that seems cool. So would I score it? Um, the story I feel was hit on most notes. Uh, I wish it would have been a little more trippier and a little bit more. Or a little bit less fluid because it, as you're playing it and as you're fighting through, the mimic part was awesome, but you never really felt like you weren't in control of anything. Like you never really felt like you were in a simulation, which I guess is the point. But I would have liked it to like bleed in just a little bit. I guess yeah, you have the flashbacks. Yeah. But uh, what would I score it? No more stalling. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a fifteen. Ooh. Um, I like the science. Sciencey, sciencey parts of it. I liked the weapons were a battle. I liked the idea that there were twists that maybe people might have seen coming, but they completely made sense in the canon of the story. There was no crazy bullshit out of left field. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there was, there was nothing where it's like, oh, you know, now we need to go and blow up the whole ship, and then it's like. Oh well, we just happen to have a nuclear bomb in the hangar, and it's like, okay, come on, like, <laughs> yeah, all right. You had to get everywhere, so that's what I'm going with. I'm going with 15. Final answer. So I guess I will send this question over to Sir Chumpslap. Yeah. Would you play it? Would you score it? Did the story work for you? Would I play it? Yeah, yeah, I would actually play this. It looked super fun. Like I said in the beginning, it was kind of like a Bioshock, kind of like Bioshock meets Dead Space almost. <laughs> yeah, Not yeah. as cool as Dead Space because that was no horror and horror is fun. But yeah, I'd play it. Did the story work for me? Fuck yeah, it did. That was I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I like how it was pretty much. From the beginning, you're trying to get two keys to blow the fucking thing up, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Yeah. You have to go here and there, but then there's side quests that, if you want to do them, you can. If not, big whoop. Yeah, you were trying to do the same thing through the whole game. Yeah. It didn't, ch- yeah. It didn't change, like you said, with, oh, there's a nuke now. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, my God, dinosaurs are over here. No, it was all linear and made sense. I like the whole idea of the, oh, you know why you're doing this? Because you don't have a memory. Cause, and that's why it's new to you. And it's, and it's like a whole test. Like, it's got its little portal aspect. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, of course. So that kind of rubbed me the right way. So in all, story work for me. I would definitely play it. I gave it a 16. Ooh. Now I'm going to kick it over to the scientist and ask him. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> Would you play it? Would you score it? Did the story work for you? I did play it. I'd play it again. <laughs> uh, the, the reason I didn't go through and platinum it was because there was an ending where you had to save every single human on the thing, which is what I was trying to do. And there was one that kept dying no matter how many times I reset. So I just gave yeah, up. Geez. <laughs> Because there's, there's aliens that can take over the minds of other people. And if you kill them and the person's close enough by, it'll kill the person too. Uh, and it kind of, no matter what I did, I couldn't save them. Sounds frustrating. It was frustrating. I tried for like a day and a half to save that guy. No, oh, Jesus. But I, I enjoyed it. I'd probably play it again. Uh, the story I like is the setting I like. Kind of. Very sciencey. Yeah, very sciencey. Very sci fi in its tropes and whatnot the glue gun was mm-hmm. awesome yeah. yeah that glue gun looked pretty cool i like how they gave you moral decisions and it you don't really understand it until the absolute end of why they were there and they were just testing you 
like saving yeah. people <laughs> here and there. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, that it's was not just, pretty cool. It's not just a little thing to go you one way on a tree. Yeah. Right, like it it wasn't a moral question. Like you've seen it in the games where it's like you can do the right thing and maybe the game's a little bit harder because you don't get a weapon or upgrade or whatever. Yeah. Or you can do the wrong thing and be selfish. Like it wasn't like that. It was this will all be revealed to you. Yeah. It it kind of doesn't matter who you save. I mean, it opens up side quests and stuff when you save people, but right. it doesn't really... I also like that the Typhon were kind of oppressive. Like you can slow them down a little bit and you can even beat some of them, but they're always a pain in the ass <laughs> no yeah. matter how strong yeah. you are. And then when the alpha attacks at the end, you kind of realize it's pointless to try and do anything. So yeah, I really liked it. I gave it a... I'm going to put it as a 19. Nice. Wow. High what? praise from Dr. Scientist. Yeah, it's the fifth highest I've rated a game. Oh, yeah, I don't know if we said that, but at that very, very end, you can choose to kill everybody. Oh, yeah. Our... yeah if, you, if they don't kill you and let you out, you can choose to kill anybody anyway. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Was, <laughs> that was the first one I watched. I was like, oh, no, he's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty great. Well, that does it. Yeah, that's it 50 the overall. Game. That's the highest we did this year, I think. Yeah, that's pretty probably up there in all time. Yeah, I already wrote my two down for next week. <laughs> Your scores or the games? Score. <laughs> Score. Don't even know what no, the game nice. is. And that's a scotchy. <laughs> it's a choice between a one or a two. <laughs> or maybe you'll be a dick and start taking people's points again if it's bad enough. Who Man, knows? We don't know. But uh, anyone else have anything they want to say about this game? Or should we just close this one up? That's yeah, a good game. Yeah, it's pretty nice. All right. Well, that'll take us to our favorite segment of every week. Which is Dr. Scientist Tom Hanks' Walk of the Week. Every week we ask Dr. Scientist for a 100% guaranteed sure thing pick of what a good piece of Tom Hanks media would be. So today, Dr. Scientist, what do you got for us? It's amazing how close the story of this movie and this game are. Because in the game, you it's humans versus Typhons, and the movie is Joe versus the Volcano. <laughs> oh, nice! I would have never seen that one. <laughs> I was like, what is he talking about? I don't remember. But yeah, at the end of Joe's, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but there's a simulation. <laughs> it's almost exactly the same. It's weird. He gets tested on all his moral choices. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was your pick for the game. I can't help but think you set this up from the beginning. <laughs> Is Earth You're already right. destroyed? We'll oh, never know. But yeah, watch Joe versus the Volcano. 1990 Excellent. with Meg Ryan, I believe. Yeah, it's a sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll take us to our favorite segment of every week, which is Chump Slaps. Fuck, marry, kill. Ding. <laughs> ah. That was the fuck, marry, kill sounds. <laughs> <laughs> every week... Uh, Dr. Scientist and I pick three characters in the game and Jump Slap has to decide which one he's going to sleep with, which one he will marry, and which one he will murder. So I don't remember the rotation, Dr. You're Scientist. Up. Am I, You're I'm two. up to pick two? Yep. Um, do you have one you definitely want to pick first? No, no, I'll, I'll, you can go. I'll, I'll come up with the third one. Okay, so I think that January has to be in this, obviously. <laughs> okay, fair. Good. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and throw you... Chief Alizar. Which one so, was that? The security officer. Oh, the one that asked you to help help build the stuff. Yeah. Turned out to be a yes. robot at the end anyway. Yeah. Correct. So two robots. I think he's talking about the sim version. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, the sim version. We'll we'll keep it that way. All right. January robot version. Salazar sim version. And Alex you. Alex. Yeah, the Alex fat got damn it. Your brother. Yes. I knew it. I, I mean, knew that was coming. All it's, right. It's got to be better than his choices last week. We ended up in a disappointed marriage and an unsatisfied woman. <laughs> well, it's going to be another disappointing marriage. <laughs> I'm taking Alex for the money. <laughs> well, he, he's in that nice. trans star money. Yeah, he's got that trans star money, man. <laughs> <laughs> we have similar body types, so it's weird. <laughs> you share clothes. Yeah. I can wear that sweet, sweet suit. <laughs> <laughs> Your closet just doubled. That's amazing. <laughs> oh Christ! Um, then I'd kill January because I don't want no fucking robot telling me what I should be thinking. 
That's a safe bet. I like it. And that leads me oh. to bang whoever was left. Salazar. 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 Elazar. Oh, that was a female. So yeah, good. Yeah. Solid. <laughs> Perfect. So again, the rundown was you were going to bang Elazar, murder January, and marry Alexio. Yep. Nailed it. Thank <laughs> you guys. Great. Perfect. So let's say there's a bunch of robophiles out there that really wish you would have banged January. And uh, they wanted to write you all of the January fanfic they already wrote. <laughs> Where would they send that to, Sir Jumpslap? You can send that to playtime at gmail.com, and I will personally read and respond to all of it. Perfect. And uh, let's say they wanted to get to us faster on the socials about why the original game Prey, which had nothing to do with this game, was way better. Because they didn't actually listen to the episode. They just saw the episode come out. <laughs> Where would they send that to on the socials there, Dr. Scientist? At Plotty Time on Instagram and Twitter. Perfect. So that does it for us. So I don't know. Get out there. Play some games. Play this one because it was pretty good. And we'll see you next week. Peace. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Let that stank out. <laughs>